Hello, good evening, Abigail. Good evening. How are you? Um, I'm, I'm tired. You're tired, really? So what about your day? How was it? Difficult? Mm, yes, a little difficult. Okay, and are you going to work tomorrow? Yes. Really? Yes. Okay, so you need to work uh, from Monday to Saturday, I think. Mm, yes, okay. but hmm? the Saturday mm, until mm -hmm. 12. 12, okay. No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that, mm, so you have Sunday off. Mm, yes. Okay. All right. Are you studying something else besides English? Excuse me? Are you studying something else besides English? Good evening, teacher. Good evening, Carlos. Or just English? Mm, I don't understand. Yes. So are you studying something else? I mean, you are studying English, right? But are you studying in the university or something else? Oh, no, only English. Only English. Okay, perfect. All right, so welcome. Um, Vladimir, okay, uh, good evening, Emerson. Thank you, Abigail. Well, guys, we're going to start with today's class. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Give me one second. So I hope your uh, Friday has been good. Okay, I know that is kind of tiring because it is the end of the week for some of you right? And for some others, you still need to work tomorrow. But guys, we are going to start with today's class and we are going to start with today's agenda. So today we are going to cover um, the conditionals. Okay, so um, do you have, well, I know that Vladimir and Emerson, you do have knowledge, right, about conditionals. Let me ask you, Abigail, do you have knowledge about conditionals? A little. A little. Okay, perfect. So we also have listening quiz, we have grammar quiz, we have reading quiz, and at the end, we are going to have the speaking time. So we are going to start with the warm up and we are going to start with sentence correction. Yeah. So let me ask you what is the mistake on the first sentence? What do you think? Mm -hmm. uh, how do you say falta? Oh, missing. There is missing. Uh, it's missing the preposition to after listens. Very good. So he listens to the music. Excellent. So what about number two? Which is the mistake on number two? Uh -huh. Hmm. Which is a mistake. Number two. I go to school by foot. Hmm. The proposition by um, with or with foot. Okay, so in this case, uh, we have I go to school by foot and that is correct. So the mistake is going to be the preposition by, it should be? With? With foot. Um, not exactly, in this case, the preposition should be on foot. On foot. Yes, on, okay. Preposition, on. Mm -hmm. On foot, yeah? No by foot, on foot. What about number three? There is no solution of this problem. What is the mistake? Not. Mm, the preposition of. Okay, very good. So which one should be 
the preposition. Abigail? Mm. <laughs> With. Mm, not exactly. Mm. I don't know. There, okay, there is no solution to this problem. Okay, two. Okay, but very good. The preposition was the incorrect. What about number four? He has been living here since two years. Ah, uh, the thing uh, for two years. Excellent. Okay, so that means also the preposition for is missing, right? Mm -hmm. Very good. Excellent. All right, like that. Very good. Okay, guys. So we're going to start with a review and we're going to talk about the zero conditional. So let's see. Emerson, can you please help us read in this information? Zero conditional. Zero conditional is used to make a statement about the real world. is always true. We also use the simple present tense to create sentence and often refer to. Mm -hmm. uh, structures. Okay. Positive. If plus subject plus verb in base form plus complement plus subject plus verb in base form plus complement. Simple. If you sleep well, you feel good. Negative. Negative. If plus subject plus do not, doesn't not, plus verb in, for, in base form plus complement plus subject plus verb in base form plus complement. If you don't sleep well, you feel bad. Question. Mm -hmm. Do does plus subject plus verb in present and present plus complement plus if plus subject plus verb in form base mm -hmm. in base form plus yeah. complement. Mm -hmm. Question mark. Do you feel bad if you don't sleep well? Thank you. Okay, guys. Um, the zero conditional. So today we are going to base our class on some conditionals. Okay. So we are going to start by talking about the zero conditional, and it says that the zero conditional is the one that we used to make a statements about the real world when the result of the condition is always true. So that means whenever we want to say or express something that is true, we also use the simple present tense to create sentences and often refers to the following structure. So with the zero conditional, uh, as you may know, guys, we use the simple present tense. Yeah, both sentences are in the simple present tense. And look at this structure. We have positive sentences. So we have if, subject, verb in base form, plus complement. And we have coma right there. Then we have subject, verb in base form, and complement. And we have two sentences in the simple present tense and the clause if. And we have if you sleep well, you feel good. And that is correct, right? If you sleep well, you feel good. That is something real. It is something true. Yeah, it is true. So then we also have negative. And for the negative sentences with a zero conditional, we have if plus subject. And since we use the simple present tense, so in the negative, we are going to use auxiliary verbs in negative. And we have 
do not or it does not, depending on your subject. Then we also have verb in base form, complement, subject, verb in base form, and complement again. So we have, if you don't sleep well, you feel bad. And that is true. If you don't sleep well, you feel angry. If you don't sleep well, you feel sad sometimes, right? If you don't sleep well, you feel uh, tired. Yeah? So something real, something that is true, zero conditional. Then we also have questions. And for the questions, we start with do or does plus subject plus verb in present, plus complement. And we also have if, then we have subject, verb in base form, and complement. And we have the question. Do you feel bad if you don't sleep well? Yes, I do. No, I don't. Sometimes, rarely, etc. Right? So in this case, this is the zero conditional. We use that zero conditional to talk about things that are always true. And how do we identify that we are talking about the zero conditional? In this case, because the tenses that we use are, well, is only the simple present tense. And we have if, which is a conditional sentence, okay? Do you have any question? Do you have any doubt? Now, if you don't have any doubt, I want you to give me some examples. Give me some examples using the zero conditional. Think about something that is true. Uh -huh. For example, if you study a lot, you get good scores. If you don't work, you don't earn money. Uh -huh. If I don't sleep early, mm -hmm. I wake up late. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. And that is true. Mm -hmm. Another example. Uh -huh. uh, for example, if you learn English, you will have better opportunities. Oh, okay. So, but that one is not with the zero conditional. Okay. It is not incorrect, but it's not part of the zero conditional. Why is she? Oh, because remember that with the zero conditional, we use the tense simple present. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. The, the two sentences mm -hmm. are in the simple question. The two sentences? Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. In this, this case, the compañero. Well, the classmate? The classmate. Uh -huh. the classmate. Uh, mm -hmm. In what classification the conditional is? Oh, yes. We are going to move to that one in one minute. Yes. But, Roberto? Your sentence in the zero conditional will be, if you study English, you get better opportunities. And you see, okay. yeah, the two sentences are in the simple present tense, right? Ah, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. Both sentences so, we have uh -huh. a, 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 in simple present. Correct, simple oh. present. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. That is the characteristic of the zero conditional, yeah? 
Mm -hmm. That is the characteristic. So whenever um, you see on the exam and, and you are asked, right? Um, choose the zero conditional sentence. So you need to choose the one that has two sentences in simple present because that one is the zero conditional. So now let's go, let's move directly to, uh, well, we have some exercises, okay, with the zero conditional. Let's see. So let's complete the sentences with what you do when you feel a certain way. So if you are angry, what do you do? I eat. Okay, so, okay, if I'm angry, I eat. Sometimes if I'm angry, I do not speak, right? Or I do not talk. Or if I'm angry, I go to sleep, right? Or if I'm angry, I talk to the person, etc. cetera, right? Mm -hmm. The two sentences are in the simple present tense. What about number two? If you are busy, what do you do? I don't have um, free time. If I'm busy, I don't have free time, okay? If I'm busy, I do not go out. If I'm busy, I use my agenda. Hmm? If I'm busy, I do not check my social media. Mm -hmm. What do you do if you are hungry? Hungry. If I am hungry, I, mm -hmm. I make a mistake. Oh, okay. So in this case, hungry means about uh, you want to eat, Emerson. Hungry. hungry. Yeah? Yes. Mm -hmm. Abigail, Roberto? Yeah. I eat food. Okay, Roberto? Uh, if I am hungry, I feel sad. Okay, if I'm hungry, I feel sad. If I'm hungry, I feel weak. Mm -hmm. If I'm hungry, I get a headache. If I'm hungry, I drink water. Mm -hmm. If I'm hungry, I cook. If I'm hungry, I order food, etc. Right? There will be many, many, many uh, examples. So, what about number four? If you are jealous, if you are jealous, what do I, you do? I feel angry. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you are jealous, you feel angry. Mm -hmm. If you are jealous, you feel uncomfortable. Uncomfortable, right? Mm -hmm. If you are jealous, uh -huh. Um, I argue. Mm, you argue, okay. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it happens, right? So if you are jealous, mm, you talk to the person, right? If you are jealous, um, you feel. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So what about yes, number five? If I'm lonely, I feel sad. I feel sad. If I'm lonely, some of you will say I feel happy, right? If you're lonely. <laughs> yes, yeah, some of you will say I don't that. feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. So you don't feel happy. Mm -hmm. If I'm lonely, um, mm, I go to buy different things. Right. Um, if I'm lonely, I practice a sport. Uh -huh. 
If you are scared, I got to sleep early. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay, so if you are scared, you go to sleep early. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if you are scared, you pray. Mm -hmm. If you are scared, you watch videos on YouTube. Right? Mm -hmm. What about number seven? If you are a sleepy, what is the meaning of a sleepy? Soñoliento, que tiene sueño. So if you are a sleepy, what do you do? Go I go to bed. To bed. <laughs> I go to bed. Okay, all of you go to bed. Okay. Yes, right. If you are sleepy, you go to bed. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, if you are nervous. Mm, I listen to music. I listen to music, very good. Uh -huh. You listen to music. Uh -huh. If you are nervous, you try to relax. Um, Um, if you are and there. other people okay you talk to other people okay if you are nervous you inhale and exhale right if you are nervous mm, i don't speak in, in public okay i do not speak in public okay all right. What do you do if you are thirsty? Thirsty. I drink some, uh, I drink water. Water, uh -huh. I drink water. If you are thirsty, you drink water, of course. Or another drink. Okay. Okay, another drinks, okay. And what about number 10? If I'm upset, I calm down. I don't talk. Yes. I don't mm -hmm. talk, right? I calm down. I go to sleep, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. So you see, this one is the zero conditional simple present tense and simple present tense. Yes? But now, what about uh, Abigail's question, right? Which is this one. This one is the answer. So we also have the first conditional. And what is the first conditional? Who wants to read? Uh -huh. Me. Thank you. First conditional is useful. Yes. Yo estoy hablando, ¿verdad? O otra persona. No, you have you. Uh, first conditional is used to talk about actions, events in the future, which are likely to happen or have a real possibility or of happening. Mm -hmm. A structure yeah if plus subject plus verb in base form plus complement comma mm -hmm. plus subject plus will plus verb in base form plus com complement yes if it is sunny we will go to the park negative if plus subject plus do not does not mm -hmm. plus bear in base form plus complement mm -hmm. comma plus subject plus will plus bear in base form plus complement mm -hmm. if it doesn't rain tomorrow 
We will go to the beach. Question. Will plus subject plus be in base form plus complement plus if plus subject plus verb in base form plus complement. Will you ask, ask our teacher for help if you have a question? Okay, thank you. All right, so the first conditional, guys, is the one that we use to talk about actions and events in the future which are likely to happen. What is the meaning of likely? Probablemente right so which are likely to happen or have a real possibility of happening and look at this we use simple present and future will that is the first conditional okay we use the simple present tense and future will and we have the examples if it is sunny we will go to the park if it doesn't rain tomorrow, we will go to the beach. Will you ask our teacher for help if you have a question? Yes, I will. No, I won't. Yeah. So the characteristic of the first conditional is that one that we use simple present and future will. Yeah, so that is the difference. Remember, zero conditional, we use simple present and simple present. First conditional, simple present and future will. Okay? Do you have any doubt? Now, when it comes to grammar, the comma is very important, right? In the middle of the two sentences. That is really important. That is when it comes to grammar. Mm -hmm. So now let's move. Okay. And we have some examples. Uh, Roberto, help us reading the first three examples. Then Abigail, the other two examples, the ones that are in the middle. And Nelly, please help us with the questions, okay? Thank you. If I study today, I'll go to the party tonight. If I eat enough money, I buy some new shoes. Mm -hmm. If I see her, I tell her. Okay, thank you. She will miss the bus if she don't doesn't mm -hmm. leave soon soon mm -hmm. okay. if you don't put on repellent you get repelling yeah you'll get beaten yes beaten what will you what will you do if you can sleep at night what will you do if you are hungry at midnight tonight? Midnight tonight. Thank you. All right, guys. So we have some examples. And as you can see, we use uh, will, will, will. I mean, with the contraction, right? But we use will. So um, do you have any doubt? Any question about this? For the first conditional? Now? So remember, first conditional to talk about real possibilities, something that is likely to happen. Zero conditional, something that is true. Okay. Yeah. So now let's move. And we also have the main topic for today that this is the one that I want you to uh, focus on, right? So we also have the second conditional. Yeah, but when do we use the second conditional? And Nelly, can you please help us reading the information? The second conditional is like the first conditional. We are still thinking about the future. We are thinking about a particular condition in the future and the result of this condition. But there is another 
is not a real possibility that this condition will happen. If I had money, I will go with you. I will go with you if I have money. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Okay, guys. So the second conditional, it is mm, not similar, okay, but it's related to the first conditional. However, with the second conditional, guys, we talk about uh, things that are not real. Yeah, that they won't happen. Okay, with the first conditional, those are real possibilities. But with the second conditional, those are not real possibilities, even though we are still thinking about the future. Hypothetical situations. So for example, if I had money, I would go with you. Or we can switch the sentence. I will go with you if I had money. It's the same sentence, but we just switch both of them. Yeah. And as you can see, we use coma whenever we start with if. And if we don't use if at the beginning, but at the end, coma is not needed. Okay, now let's talk about the structure. So with the second conditional, the structure will change, okay? Why? Because we are going to use if plus subject plus verb in past plus complement. So that means a sentence in the simple past. Teacher, but we are talking about future. Yes, but it's a conditional. So even though we are talking about the future, it says that we need to use a simple past sentence. Then we have coma, subject, would, plus verb in base form, plus complement. Look at that. Subject, would, verb in base form, and complement. And we have the example, if I knew his name, I would tell you. If I knew his name, I would tell you. So in this case, I don't know his name. That's why I say, well, if I knew his name, I will tell you. It's like saying, si yo supiera su nombre, yo te lo diría, but I don't know his name. So I cannot tell you. Yeah. So we have the negative. If plus subject plus didn't because it's in negative, verb in base form plus complement. Subject would verb in base form plus complement. And the example is, if I didn't have a headache, I would go to the party. Mm -hmm. And what is the meaning of if I didn't have a headache, I would go to the party. It's like saying, si yo no tuviera dolor de cabeza, yo iría a la fiesta. You see? So it's about talking about something in the present, but you cannot do it. You cannot do it. Yeah. So if I didn't have a headache, I will go to the party. Yes. And we also have the question. Would plus subject plus verb in base form if subject verb in past and complement and the question mark. Would she come if I paid for her flight? Vendría ella si yo pagara por su vuelo? Mm, maybe. Right? Or no. Right? Or yes, she would. No, she wouldn't. Hmm? 
Now, um, remember that this is not about tenses. I mean, the structure has sentences in simple past, right? And all of that, but it is not related to the simple past. Yeah, this one is conditional. Yeah, those are conditionals. So do you have doubts? Do you have questions about the second conditional right now, so far? Always use wool. Always. Always. And then the verb in base form. Verb in base form. Yeah. Verb in base form. Huh? Okay. Let's move, and we have some examples. Um, Roberto, help us reading the examples. Okay. If you knew the answer, you uh -huh. will win the prize. Okay. If you didn't uh, study hard, I wouldn't pass my, my exams. Uh -huh. Would you accept the job if they offer it to you? Okay. Repeat after me, Roberto, and say, answer. 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 Excellent, like that, okay? okay? So we have, if you knew the answer, you would win the prize, but you don't know the answer. So you cannot win the prize, right? Hypothetical things, things that are not true, things that are not real. If I didn't study hard, I wouldn't pass my exams. Si yo no estudiara, right? Arduo, yo no pasaría mis exámenes. Would you accept the job if they offer it to you? ¿Aceptarías el trabajo si ellos te lo ofrecieran? Yeah, so in this case, are things that can be possible, but there is not real possibility. I mean, hypothetical situations, hypothetical. Uh -huh. So now let's move. And we also have extra information. Um, can you please help us reading this extra information, Emerson? Okay. The second conditional, extra information. Yeah. In the second conditional, when the verb in the if clause is a form of the be, we used were instead of was. Not that this use of the word is possible and recommended with the old subjects. Mm -hmm. was is also becoming acceptable but many grammar grammarians Grammarian? still ins insist that you should use where thank you okay guys so this is very important with the second conditional listen to that with the second conditional when the verb in the if clause yeah, is a form of be. We use where instead of was. Mm -hmm. Let's note that this use of where is possible and recommended with all subjects. Was is also becoming acceptable. But many grammarians still insist that you should use where. So the ones that study grammar, they are called grammarians, okay? The ones that are really uh, good at a grammar, grammarians, okay? So now, in this case, what does it mean? Yeah, it means the following. Look at this, look at this. If she were my daughter, I wouldn't let her drop out of a school teacher, but we don't use where with she. But in the second conditional, yes, we do. 
Just conditional, no verb to be itself. Second conditional only. We use where with I, you, we, they, he, she, and it. Instead of was. Why? Because we are talking about a conditional. Yes? Do you have questions? If they were really interested in the offer, they would contact you. Okay? Questions, doubts? No? You know, um, a song, I don't know if you have uh, listened to this song, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that maybe you have listen to, to that one, at least somebody mentioned it. Um, this song that is called, If I Were a Boy from Beyonce. If I Were a Boy. That song is written in the second conditional because Beyonce cannot be a boy. Hypothetical things. And that's why she says, right? If I were a boy, she doesn't say if I was a boy. She says, if I were a boy, because that song is in the second conditional. All of the song, if you read the lyrics, second conditional. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Do you have doubts? Do you have questions, something that is not clear about conditionals, about the second conditional. Remember, okay, second conditional, we use simple past in the other sentence, would plus verb in base form. We use it to talk about hypothetical things, yeah. We also have the rule that with the verb to be, we use where instead of was, yeah? For all the pronouns, and that's why we have she were, not she was, she were, but only for the conditionals, okay? Not for the verb to be, just for conditionals. And then um, we also have just maybe some examples, right? So you can see like the difference. Um, so in this case, we have the sentence in zero conditional, the uh, first conditional and the second conditional, yeah? Look at this. If you eat a lot, you put on weight. Yes. If you eat a lot, you put on weight. Simple present, simple present. If they're hungry, I'll make some sandwiches. So simple present and will. If she saw a snake, she would be terrified or she'd be terrified. You can use contractions as well. Look at this. Simple pass and would. Mm -hmm. Do you have any doubt? Is there something that is not clear? Let's have a question. Yes. Only three conditional exist. No, there, there are, we still have the third conditional and we have the mixed conditionals. Yeah. I think that we are going to study the third conditional next week, okay? But yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. But right now, just zero, first and second, so you understand the three of them, right? And then we can move to the third conditional. Um, but yes, we have five, okay? So zero, first, second, third, and mixed conditionals. And the mixed conditionals, as the name says, it is a mix of all of them. Mm -hmm. So that's why we need to learn this very, I would say, well, uh, the, the uh, four, zero, first, second and third conditional to understand the mixed conditionals. Um, okay. 
Any other doubt? Uh -huh. No? Okay, so now let's do something. Let me, let me see. Okay, so we have this sentence, guys. This one is going to be the one that you can see right now. It is in the zero conditional. Give me this sentence using the first conditional. Change it to the um, first conditional. This one is zero conditional, but change it. Change this sentence to the first. In first, in first conditional. Okay. Yes. If you eat a lot, you will put on weight. Excellent. Okay, now give me that one in the second conditional. If you ate a lot, mm -hmm. you will put on weight. Excellent. So you see, very easy, right? Because yes. that, yeah, you're using to play with the tenses, right? If you, in this case, ate, right? If you ate a lot, you would put on weight. Uh -huh. And this one is the second. Uh -huh. You see? Very good. Any doubt, guys, before we move on? No? Now, let's move and let's see. We have the if generation, a short paragraph, okay? So you can see how to use conditionals, yeah? In different contexts, yeah? So we have the if generation. Um, Roberto, help us read in the first paragraph. And uh, let me see, um, Abigail, help us read in the second paragraph. Uh, nowadays, Many people have issues with appreciating uh, what they have. It is always a matter of if I were rich, if I were younger, if I were him, etc. I don't have a, I don't have a problem with the fact uh, that we want more from our lives. What uh, annoys me nice. is the fact that we keep saying what we will do if. Nowadays, I keep finding myself the new if that can successfully, successfully, successfully keep me away from being happy. I think that if I had more time, I would start going to the gym. If I had more money, I could eat healthy, mm -hmm. etc. It is time to take control of your life. And if you want some, something, work hard and get it. Remember, if you don't do anything for your your life, nobody will do it for you. Mm -hmm. Every man is responsible, responsible, responsible for his own des destiny. Destiny. Thank you. Okay, so a uh, pronunciation, finding successfully, okay? Finding and successfully. Guys, the if generation, the if generation, right? So nowadays, many people have issues with appreciating what they have. It is always a matter of if I were rich, if I were younger, if I were him, etc. Yeah, I don't have a problem with the fact 
that we want more from our lives. What annoys me is the fact that we keep saying what we will do if, yeah? Nowadays, I keep finding myself the new ifs that can successfully keep me away from being happy. I think that if I had more time, I would have started going to the gym. If I had more money, I would eat healthy, etc. It is time to take control of your life. And if you want something, work hard and get it. Remember, if you don't do anything for your life, nobody will do it for you. Yeah, every man is responsible for his own destiny. Now, let me ask you, which is the conditional that we are using on the first sentences? If I were rich, if I were younger, if I were him. Which is this conditional? Conditional. The second conditional. What about on number three? If I had more time, I would start going to the gym. If I had more money, I would eat healthy. First conditional? Mm, okay. Mm, the first conditional? No, Nelly. Okay. It is going to be the second, the second conditional. Okay. The second one. What about on this one? If you want something, work hard and get it. Which conditional is that one? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The zero conditional. The zero conditional. Very good. And this one, if you don't do anything for your life, nobody will do it for you. Zero either. This one is going to be? Zero. Mm, no, the zero is simple present, simple present. And here we have That's if. No. This one is? The first conditional, yeah? So guys, um, an easy way for you to identify once again is with the tenses. With the zero conditional, we use simple present and simple present. With the first conditional, we use simple present and future will. And look at this. If you don't do anything for your life, nobody will do it for you. Simple present in negative plus will, future. So that means that we are talking about, that we are talking about the first conditional, yeah? And with the second conditional, we use simple past and would plus verb in base form. She would, she'd be terrified. <laughs> Do you have any question? Do you have any doubt? No? Okay. So what we are going to do right now is that we are going to take the grammar quiz about the second conditional, yeah? We are going to take the grammar test about the second conditional. This is just second conditional, no zero conditional, no first conditional, okay? Z uh, second conditional only, second conditional only, yes? And the passcode is grammar. Grammar, pay attention to the, to the question, to the sentence, okay? Pay attention and decide which one is the correct option.
Okay. Take your time, okay? Take your time. Teacher, I just come into my home. I was driving. Okay. Okay, Luis. Thank you. Uh, do you have questions? Well, I think that, but um, do you listen to the explanation? Yes, I listen, but I repeat the video tomorrow in YouTube. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Um, so what they are doing, Luis, they are taking the, the quiz. So if you want, you can take it as well. Okay, I'm going to resend yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. I'll be on the test right now. Okay, you are, okay. that class i remember a tv show what well, the name was what would you do when mm -hmm. with jen quinones mm -hmm. what would you do all right what would you do mm -hmm. uh, i failed i failed the test <laughs> <laughs> okay luis <laughs> sorry I... don't worry okay okay, mm -hmm. okay so let me see Mm -hmm. Be careful with the structure, guys. Okay, that is a tip. Uh, pay attention to the structure. La estructura es lo que tienen que fijarse. The structure.
Okay, guys. So let me see. Um, okay, I got um, some of you. Okay, I'm sure that some of you are still working on, on the exam. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Okay. Do you have a um, questions related to this quiz? I think if you have no have a uh, no pay attention, you is complicated. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I can see that uh, right here we have some um, good scores, okay, but we also have low scores. Um. All right, guys. Let me just show something, okay? Sure. Let uh, yeah. Uh, have a, so, uh, for example, in some cases, mm -hmm. uh, uh, usually the first sentence is in, in simple, in simple past, and mm -hmm. after the will plus the verb, right? Correct. But in some cases, for example, in the question number uh, two, two. Yes, okay. Uh, say uh, she will be nervous if she did her homework. It changed. First, it will last verb, and after the the, the simple uh, past, mm -hmm. and there there is not a, a question. It's in my question. Ah, and, and okay, I think that I get your 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 question. I mean, you are talking about the position, probably, right? Yes, the so, position. Hmm. Okay. If she did, I think, her homework, right? Okay, so in this case, um, very good question, okay? Guys, um, when it comes to the conditionals, we can use them in two ways. The first uh, way is like doing this, right? The common one, the one that we have seen, this one. If she did her homework, comma, she wouldn't be nervous like this and we can also create the same the same question like this the same sentence sorry like this so um in this case it's about position i mean we can switch all the conditionals all we can switch those the ones that we have right here as well we can say you put on weight if you eat a lot. You will put on weight if you eat a lot. You will put on weight if you ate a lot. And the idea is the same. The only thing that we switch. And when it comes to grammar, whenever you start a sentence with if, a comma is needed. But if you do not start the sentence with the if clause and it goes in the second place, so comma is not needed. Okay. But you can change uh, any, any structure. Okay. Yes. But uh, this is something that it is, um, I would say, mandatory, okay? That the sentence that follows if goes in simple past, always. We cannot say, for example, we cannot say, we cannot say something like this. She did her homework. We cannot say something like this because the sentence that follows if goes always in the simple past, 
always, it's mandatory. Yeah? So that is actually something that you need to remember because I, I, I saw some, some uh, exams that you took that you switch all of the structure. And we cannot do this, okay? Because the sentence that follows if in the second conditional goes in simple past, like this. Simple past, simple past. Mm -hmm. But the meaning is the same, right? Yes, the meaning of those two, of those two, the same, the same thing, the same. Okay. Um, the only thing is that, uh, like the, the, the thought, right? For example, eh, si ella hiciera su tarea, no estaría nerviosa. Ella no estaría nerviosa si hiciera su tarea. Es lo mismo. Yeah. Si ella hiciera su tarea, ella no estaría nerviosa. Ella no estaría nerviosa si ella hiciera su tarea. It's the same. The same. But just the grammar rules. Coma. If you start with if, and if not, no coma. Uh -huh. Okay, teacher. thank you. Okay, perfect. Any other doubt? Now, okay, so let's see, let's check just the last scores. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I see that some of you got really good scores, okay? Very good. If, um, if you are still like, um, maybe with some doubts, try to study the topic, yeah? Um, and if not, we're going to make a review next week, all right, about this topic. But try to study um, the second conditional by yourself because next week we are going to also cover the third conditional. So I need to, to get this one clearly to start with the third conditional. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So now we are going to move to the activity that we are going to create. But first, I'm going to take the attendance, okay? Because it's already 9.13. So I need to take the attendance. Aleida Esmeralda Amaya. Um, let me see if Aleida is here. I didn't know. Atilio Ernesto Castillo. Atilio? No. Carlos Omar Linares Cañas. I'm here, teacher. Thank you. Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Daisy Elizabeth Recinos. Daisy Elizabeth. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, miss. Thank you. Jonathan Jose González Domínguez. Jonathan. Jorge Antonio Sánchez Quiñones. Present teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López Montes. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Antonio Elías Flores. Present teacher, I'm sorry. Don't worry, thank you. Juan José Herrera Alvarenga. Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta Chévez. Present. Thank you. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez Elaya. Present teacher. Luis Miguel Corbera Enríquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Marian Scarlett Rodríguez Luna. Marian. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Maris. Nelly Lilibet Andrade García. Present. Thank you. Pablo Adalberto Abrego Vázquez. Roberto Esaú Celaya Argumedo. Present, sir. Thank you. Eh, Raúl Antonio Jordán Miranda. Raúl Antonio Jordán. Sandra Abigail Bonilla Cano. 
Sandra Abigail. Tatiana Ivon Torres de Beltrán. Present, Miss. Thank you. Wendy Marisela Ramírez Guevara. Wendy. Ah, oh, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Pablo. Thank you, Wendy. Um, let me see. All right. So, and Wilbert Jonathan Bautista Aguilar. All right, guys. Uh, right now, what we are going to do is the following, okay? So, as you can see, we have an example right here about the if generation. So, we used the zero, the first, and the second conditional, the three of them, yes? So what I need to do is I need to create a short paragraph, yes? And I need to use zero, first, and the second conditional, at least one sentence in your paragraph. Invent an idea, something, but using zero first and second conditional. At least one sentence in zero conditional, one sentence in first conditional, and one sentence in the second conditional, okay? I'll give you a couple of minutes so you can go ahead and work on that, okay? With your team, let me go ahead and create the breakout rooms. If you cannot participate on this activity, uh, please stay in the main room, but if you can, please go to the breakout room that I'm going to assign, okay? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Roberto Camba, can you share um, a screen share? Your screen? Yes. Your screen? <laughs> yes. The screen. Okay. I think that we all are tired, right? Yes. Yeah, it's Friday. It's, it's Friday. Friday, yes. Yes, it's Friday. <laughs> Um, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. We have to choose the, the, the topic first, I think. And um, after we have to, to use the, the first conditions. Okay. Zero you use the, the trouble? Uh, sorry, Emerson. Thank you. I didn't get it. Maybe you can give use the about the trouble. Trouble or traffic? Trouble. 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 Oh, yes. Trouble. Yeah. 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 I think that is a, a good idea. Yes. Yes. Yeah. For example, we can begin when she is preparing your Backpacks, they has nervous. Maybe, maybe you can uh, uh, type um, tomorrow, no, no, no. Today, mm -hmm. today I'm gonna travel to um, Mexico. <laughs> Yes, maybe. Okay, so anyway. travel to Mexico, and and I have to um, I have to to prepare my 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 bag. Okay, uh, can you um, repeat me the, the the first sentence, please? <laughs> I never <laughs> okay. Today? <laughs> okay, today. Okay. 
Today, uh, I I gonna travel to Mexico. Okay, and I have to prepare my 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 bag. If I go right, no, I think uh late um after the my bag, you can uh type um. If I don't, if I don't hurry up, all right, no, all right, go. If I don't hurry up, uh, I I can't uh, lose my my. I I can't no. I, I can, can lose. No, I, 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 I can, I can, I arrive late to the airport. I don't know. If, if I don't hurry up. It's, it's, it's sort of conditional, right? Yes. Ah, okay, okay. But we can put the. Uh, because we 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 have to use the the simple present. Okay, if I don't hurry up, I oh, oh, maybe maybe another sentence. <laughs> okay. Mm, but, but I mean, it, it, it's not necessary for you to add the the conditionals in order, right? You can start with the. First conditional and then the zero conditional, and, but <laughs> because that idea could go like today I go, uh, no, today I'm going to travel to Mexico, or today I'm traveling to Mexico. Uh -huh. I'm not going to travel. I'm going. I'm. I'm, I'm going. Today, I am going to travel to Mexico. I have to prepare and I have to prepare my bags. Mm -hmm. And, oh no, like, and I have to prepare, ah, oh yes, okay. To prepare my bags, okay? Uh huh. Uh, you have, I have to prepare two, like, two times right there. I have to. Oh, okay. If, if I okay. If I don't hurry, I don't know. It's okay. Hurry up, but if I don't hurry up, um, I I'm late. I'm I'm late to to leave to the airport. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, 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 I don't know if it's okay. For example, if I don't hurry up, I lose my trip. Mm -hmm. Yes. I lose my my trip. Tendría que llevar will. I will lose my trip, okay? Okay. okay. I will lose. I will lose my trip. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was my trip, okay. That is a, the, the first condition. Mm If a paragraph or a sentence, it's a paragraph. Okay. Maybe a, if I 
Um, if I lose my trip, maybe mm -hmm. uh, I feel sad. <laughs> Puede ser zero condition. No. Yes. Yes, it could be. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure that the idea it goes along, right, with the with the paragraph. If I lose my trip, I I put that. No, I, I feel sad. sad. <laughs> I, I think... oh, I will lose my money too. <laughs> right there. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. Yes. Okay, um, well, uh, after that, uh, but, but if I feel nervous, if I am nervous, I try to relax. Mm-hmm. Like this, right? Yes. But if I am nervous, I try to relax. For enjoying my trip? <laughs> And enjoy my trip. Yes, enjoy my trip. If you want, we can put a, a some compliment here to between the, the, the sentence. For example, this. It's a new experience. Mm -hmm. And for me, and this, and I have to, I don't know, something like that. I don't know. <laughs> Excited. Ah, oh, yeah, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, in that case, just the structure. Uh, excited, nervous. But if I am nervous, I usually try to relax. Okay. Mm -hmm. The position. 
I usually try to relax and enjoy the trip. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think that you are missing the second condition. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, uh, we can put uh, something like, uh, for example, uh, like a compliment. Uh, my brother, we, my brother will, uh, Recoger, como se dice, teacher, in the airport. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. The airports. Sorry, eh, Carla. No, eh, the second conditional use only in past simple first. Okay. Or maybe you can say, um, you can type, um, if my travel were uh, tomorrow, I would I would uh, I would have more time to prepare okay. everything. <laughs> yes. so, so, sorry, uh, can you repeat, uh, if, please? And if if my travel were tomorrow. In my trip, if my trip, if my trip were tomorrow, or if my flight, if my flight, if, if my trip were tomorrow, um, I would, I would have, I think, I will, I, I will Sorry. Have more time. I will have more time. Have more, okay. Enjoy more time. More time. Well, I will have to. I will have more time to 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 prepare. Yeah. I think to prepare. Mm, check. To prepare Remember. for that. Uh, uh, we can put uh, something like my, my brother well, only for the compliment uh, uh, my brother bought uh, my the, the tickets right the ticket and and I say him I say him that if my three were tomorrow I will have a more time to prepare for it. Okay. Yeah. Can you repeat, please? Can you repeat? Is the last uh, line? Uh -huh, okay. Sorry, eh, eh, Carla. No, que Nelly le, Nelly preguntó de qué había dicho. Ah, no, no, no. He, he porque el Roberto say the last line of paragraph. Ah, okay. No, I think that it's, it's okay. Okay. So, We can put the of another color. 
Thank you. The condition of this. Very mm -hmm. one, two. If I am nervous, okay. Very true. Um, I try to. Ah, uh, no se mira. <laughs> sí, no se mira. Medio color, <laughs> light color. Es this, ok. ¿Cómo sería color claro? Uh, yes. Sería color claro. Let me check. I don't know. <laughs> I think that this is good. Ok. Eh... We we have a four four sentence for conditional. Ah, later. We can uh, add other three. I don't know. My bra my brand is boring enough. <laughs> Sorry, eh, eh, Carla. No, my. ¿Cómo se dice? Brain o brain? My brain. 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 My brain is boring. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> yes, I know, it's right? Friday. It's Friday. I know, guys. I know. Uh -huh. Yes, if you want, you can just finish the idea, right? So just to probably finish with it. Uh -huh. Just finish yes. the idea. <laughs> Inconditional, eh, ever, siempre se usa el if. In the, yes, we always use if, always, always, always. Always, in the zero, first, second. Yes, all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Porque sale prepare en en red. Um, prepare. Prepare. Yes. I have to prepare. It's in red, right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, yeah, like... Yes. Okay. okay. Um, all right. Let's go back to the main room, okay? Let's go back. Yeah. Okay, so let's see. I think that Roberto is the one that is going to, to present. Okay, Roberto, can you please share with us your paragraph? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, 
Okay. Uh, the program say, uh, today I'm going to travel to Mexico. I have to prepare my bags. If I don't hurry up, I will lose my trip. And I, if I lose my trip, I will lose a lot of money. This is a new experience for me, and I feel uh, excited and nervous. But uh, if I am nervous, I usually try to relax and enjoy my trip. My brother bought tickets and say me that if my trip uh, were tomorrow, I will have more time to prepare for it. Okay. Um, I just have one observation. Well, two observations, okay? okay? The first one is going to be where it says, my brother bought tickets and I say him. Mm, I say him or I said to him. Yes. And the last uh, observation is the period at the end of the paragraph. Okay. Yes, much better. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. But yes, yeah, uh, all of the conditionals are perfect. You use commas. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Do you have any uh, question about? Conditionals now? Something that maybe is not clear? No? I think that with practice, you actually are going to get it, right? With practice. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, let's take the listening quizzes, okay? We have three. We have three listening quizzes today, okay? So let's take listening 27. If you are on the spreadsheet, let's open that one. Listening 27, there you go. So let me see. Pascal listening, capital letters. Let me know once you're ready so I can play the recording and I'm going to play it three times. Okay, let me know. Right. Okay, perfect. So here we go. Pay attention, okay? Three times. So how are things going, Steve? Well, to be honest, Carla, I was feeling great on Saturday, but I started to feel sick Sunday afternoon. I thought I'd get better, but I feel worse than before. And I'm really worried because I'm scheduled to give a presentation at work on Friday, so I have to be better by then. Well, what seems to be the problem? Well, I thought I had the flu, but the doctor said it was just a bad cold. He gave me some cold medicine to take care of my stuffy nose and fever. I'm supposed to take the medicine three times a day after eating, but it doesn't seem to help. He also told me to stay off my feet for a day or so, but I'm so busy these days. Listen, forget about that medicine. I have just the thing to get rid of bad colds. You see, my mom is really into herbal medicine. Oh, no thanks. Oh, come on, give it a try. You just take some of my mom's herbal tea and drink it four times a day. Believe me, you'll be up and dancing around in no time. Dancing around in no time, right? Well, I guess. Nothing else seems to be doing the job. Great. I'll come by your place at 7.30. See you then. Okay, again. Here we go again. So how are things going, Steve? Well, to be honest, Carla, I was feeling great on Saturday, but I started to feel sick Sunday afternoon. I thought I'd get better, but I feel worse than before. And I'm really worried because I'm scheduled to give a presentation at work on Friday, so I have to be better by then. Well, what seems to be the problem? Well, I thought I had the flu, but the doctor said it was just a bad cold. He gave me some cold medicine to take care of my stuffy nose and fever. I'm supposed to take the medicine three times a day after eating, but it doesn't seem to help. He also told me to stay off my feet for a day or so, but I'm so busy these days. Listen, forget about that medicine. I have just the thing to get rid of bad colds. You see, my mom is really into herbal medicine. Oh, no thanks. Oh, come on, give it a try. You just take some of my mom's herbal tea and drink it four times a day. Believe me, you'll be up and dancing around in no time. Dancing around in no time, right? Well, I guess. Nothing else seems to be doing the job. Great. I'll come by your place at 7.30. See you then. Okay, the last time. So how are things going, Steve? 
Well, to be honest, Carl, I was feeling great on Saturday, but I started to feel sick Sunday afternoon. I thought I'd get better, but I feel worse than before, and I'm really worried because I'm scheduled to give a presentation at work on Friday, so I have to be better by then. Well, what seems to be the problem? Well, I thought I had the flu, but the doctor said it was just a bad cold. He gave me some cold medicine to take care of my stuffy nose and fever. I'm supposed to take the medicine three times a day after eating, but it doesn't seem to help. He also told me to stay off my feet for a day or so, but I'm so busy these days. Listen, forget about that medicine. I have just the thing to get rid of bad colds. You see, my mom is really into herbal medicine. Oh, no thanks. Ah,、oh, come on, give it a try. You just take some of my mom's herbal tea and drink it four times a day. Believe me, you'll be up and dancing around in no time. Dancing around in no time, right? Well, I guess nothing else seems to be doing the job. Great. I'll come by your place at seven thirty. See you then. Okay. So let's see. Submit your answers. Mm -hmm. I don't teach. Thank you.、Mm, all right. Okay. Let's take the second one. Okay. Let's take the second one. And、there you go. The same thing. Listening. Okay. Listening is the passcode. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys. The same thing. I'm going to play it three times. Okay. Pay attention to this、uh, audio. Okay. Let me know once you're ready. Ready. Okay. Here we go. Well, hello everyone, and welcome to today's show. And joining me today is my daughter Ashley, who has had to endure my cooking experiments over the years. Are we ready, Ashley? Ready to eat. Well, let's wait for a few minutes. We'll get to that. But as you know, my faithful listeners, I started cooking and baking almost thirty years ago when my grandmother taught me in her humble kitchen. In fact. She taught me almost everything I know, and I've never attended cooking classes. You should have. Wait, wait, wait! I know my daughter's going to mention to you, faithful listeners, that recently, as I was helping the kids prepare for our kitchen for a chicken meal, I forgot to take the chicken out of the oven, burned the bird to a crisp, and we ended up ordering pizza for dinner. We had to use a fire extinguisher. <laughs> But that's another story. So anyway, today I'd like to share with you our favorite. At least my favorite chocolate chip cookie recipe. Now, before you switch the TV channel, I know what you're thinking: another fattening cookie recipe. But wait, what makes this recipe great is that it offers a wonderful low-fat, low-calorie, low-cholesterol dessert for the entire family. We still like the fat, though. <laughs> well, I know we do, but let's say. Um, we have all the ingredients, and so we can start by mixing all of the ingredients: the sugars, the flour, the egg whites, the low-fat butter, vanilla, baking soda, and a pinch of salt in a large mixing bowl. Then we add the mini chocolate chips. Now, my kids would like me to add the big ones, but we start with the mini chocolate chips. And don't forget to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And finally, when the cookies are done. Take them out of the oven, remove them from the cookie sheet, and let them cool before their fingers get into them. Did I forget anything? Yeah. If you have college-age kids, be sure to make a few extra batches they can take back to school for their roommates. And don't forget, the kids still at home. Oh well, yeah. We can't do that. We can't forget them. And unfortunately, by the time your kids get the cookies, you, the cook, will be left with a single cookie. Your instant diet plan for you. And a dirty kitchen. So that's all for today. On next week's show, we will be showing you how to feed hungry teenagers on a budget without having to sell the family car. Until then. Okay, the second time.
Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. And joining me today is my daughter, Ashley, who has had to endure my cooking experiments over the years. Are we ready, Ashley? Ready to eat. Well, let's wait for a few minutes. We'll get to that. But as you know, my faithful listeners, I started cooking and baking almost 30 years ago when my grandmother taught me in her humble kitchen. In fact, she taught me almost everything I know, and I've never attended cooking classes. You should have. Wait, wait, wait. I know my daughter's going to mention to you faithful listeners that recently, as I was helping the kids prepare for our kitchen for a chicken meal, I forgot to take the chicken out of the oven, burned the bird to a crisp, and we ended up ordering pizza for dinner. We had to use a fire extinguisher. <laughs> but that's another story. So anyway, today I'd like to share with you our favorite, at least my favorite, chocolate chip cookie recipe. Now, before you switch the TV channel, I know what you're thinking. Another fattening cookie recipe? But wait, what makes this recipe great is that it offers a wonderful low-fat, low-calorie, low-cholesterol dessert for the entire family. We still like the fat, though. <laughs> well, I know we do, but let's say um, we have all the ingredients, and so we can start by mixing all of the ingredients, the sugars, the flour, the egg whites, the low-fat butter, vanilla, baking soda, and a pinch of salt in a large mixing bowl. Then we add the mini chocolate chips. Now, my kids would like me to add the big ones, but we start with the mini chocolate chips. And don't forget to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And finally, when the cookies are done, take them out of the oven, remove them from the cookie sheet, and let them cool before their fingers get into them. Did I forget anything? Yeah, if you have college-age kids, be sure to make a few extra batches they can take back to school for their roommates. And don't forget, the kid's still at home. Oh, well, yeah, we can't do that. We can't forget them. And, unfortunately, by the time your kids get the cookies, you, the cook, will be left with a single cookie, your instant diet plan for you, and a dirty kitchen. So, that's all for today. On next week's show, we will be showing you how to feed hungry teenagers on a budget without having to sell the family car. Until then. Okay, guys, do you need me to play once more? No? Okay. Yes? Yes, teacher. Okay, here we go. I don't catch the temperature. Okay. Yes, okay, here we go. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to today's show. And joining me today is my daughter, Ashley, who has had to endure my cooking experiments over the years. Are we ready, Ashley? Ready to eat. Well, let's wait for a few minutes. We'll get to that. But as you know, my faithful listeners, I started cooking and baking almost 30 years ago when my grandmother taught me in her humble kitchen. In fact, she taught me almost everything I know, and I've never attended cooking classes. You should have. Wait, wait, wait. I know my daughter's going to mention to you faithful listeners that recently, as I was helping the kids prepare for our kitchen for a chicken meal, I forgot to take the chicken out of the oven, burned the bird to a crisp, and we ended up ordering pizza for dinner. We had to use a fire extinguisher. <laughs> but that's another story. So anyway, today I'd like to share with you our favorite, at least my favorite, chocolate chip cookie recipe. Now, before you switch the TV channel, I know what you're thinking. Another fattening cookie recipe? But wait, what makes this recipe great is that it offers a wonderful low-fat, low-calorie, low-cholesterol dessert for the entire family. We still like the fat, though. <laughs> well, I know we do, but let's say um, we have all the ingredients, and so we can start by mixing all of the ingredients, the sugars, the flour, the egg whites, the low-fat butter, vanilla, baking soda, and a pinch of salt in a large mixing bowl. Then we add the mini chocolate chips. Now, my kids would like me to add the big ones, but we start with the mini chocolate chips. And don't forget to preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And finally, when the cookies are done, take them out of the oven, remove them from the cookie sheet, and let them cool before their fingers get into them. Did I forget anything? Yeah, if you have college-age kids, be sure to make a few extra batches they can take back to school for their roommates. And don't forget, the kid's still at home. Oh, well, yeah, we can't do that. We can't forget them. 
And, unfortunately, by the time your kids get the cookies, you, the cook, will be left with a single cookie, your instant diet plan for you, and a dirty kitchen. So, that's all for today. On next week's show, we will be showing you how to feed hungry teenagers on a budget without having to sell the family car. Until then. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see that some of you got 100. Excellent. Okay. Um, all right. So I think that, that was kind of uh, difficult, right? Because of probably the speed, right? Of the of the of the audio. Okay, guys, before we go, okay, before we go. Um let's see. Nelly, if you had only 24 hours to live, what would you do? Say say to my family that mm -hmm. I want. Okay. Because I don't talk a lot. <laughs> but then I don't express my feeling. I don't express my feeling. Mm -hmm. Almost. Okay. Um, hardly ever. Hardly ever. Okay. All right. Emerson, what about you? If you had only 24 hours to live, what would you do? I probably go to the travel for uh, for for 24 hours okay or do no no new place okay. to visit I, new places yes yes okay perfect uh, roberto if you were given three wishes what would you wish okay uh, a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> Okay, of course, right? <laughs> okay, of I course. Um, I wish uh, success uh, for all the people that I I know. Okay. Uh, and uh, I don't know, uh, a piece of the world, I don't know, something like that. Okay, peace in the world. Okay. In the world, okay. It could be, yes. Okay. What about you, um, Luis? If you had only 24 hours to live, what would you do? Um, I will jump, jump from the plane. <laughs> oh, you are, you are going to practice or uh, you will practice parachuting? Yes. You will practice parachuting. Okay. And if you were given three wishes, what would you wish? Uh, probably I... Uh... I will buy a, buy a big house okay. and I will have many people uh, work please. Okay. Well, we're okay. And you, Carla? Hello. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. I think that I think that somebody actually is okay. Don't worry. It's okay. Hey, Carla, if you had only 24 hours to live, what would you do? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Sleep now. No. Uh, maybe spend time with my family. I spend time with your family. Okay. And if you were given three wishes, what would you wish? Mm. Maybe uh, health. Health. Good health. Okay. Um, a good job. Okay, a good job. Okay. And travel, travel free. Free travel. Free travel. Okay, okay. free travels. Okay. Excellent. Okay, I think that they good all right guys just because of the time because it's already 10 p.m 
We are going to stop right here, but I really thank you for being responsible and connecting today. I'll see you back on Monday. Please enjoy your weekend, have fun, and I'll see you back on Monday, okay? Take thank care, guys. Sure. Good night, bye-bye. Take care. Thank you, good night. Good night, Good night, Miss, bye-bye. Good night, bye-bye, good night. Bye -bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night.